I think the thing that, that strikes me, that touches me, and, and it's twofold. One, I, I pray for uh, the grace um, from God and the Spirit to shut off my, my critical antennae. Because uh, when I when I go, I'm thinking, oh, you know, he could have said that a little better, and that sort of, and that's that's not appropriate, really. But it's just part of the way I exegete life, as it were, you know. Um, so I pray for that grace to be able to receive the offering uh, from uh, from the preacher when I go visiting. And um, what most strikes me then is that the 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 preacher. Is is you know confident and yet not arrogant in conveying what he or she has seen, witnessed, and experienced in the text. It is one thing, and it's good to hear sort of the the quotes supported from other writers and so forth that that's woven in. But I'm most um, engaged, as it were, most um, permitted, if I can use that word, given permission. Um, to experience the mystery of the text and God. If that person bears witness, shows evidence of having uh, done the work to see where does this touch me as a preacher, and how can I report on, how can I lift up what I have seen and what I have experienced, what, what the Spirit has brought, what, what life and hope, or what conviction has befallen me I wasn't expecting. Um, I thought I knew this text, but somehow it's, it's knocked me off my pompous horse. And here's how I'm trying to deal with that event. So that's what I, I kind of look for experiencing. I mean, uh, obviously it's not just personal testimony, but it's how that testimony has been occasioned by the text and, and by um, something that has come of surprise, perhaps, or, or confirmation.